Thank you for being a part of Medicine Singing. You're watching the series of Comfort. And we began with Discord. And now, Submergence. Can you remember the first time when you had an inkling that something was not right in your life? Perhaps you had come face to face with addiction, betrayal in a friendship, loss of a loved one. Perhaps there were things you could not stop thinking about over and over and over again. Perhaps there was a nagging bitterness in your life, an unforgiveness of a relationship gone bad. Whether it came from delight or destructiveness, you knew that something was wrong in your life. And at that point, there came discord. Something was not right. What we held deeply as a value or a belief, something we cherished and held dear, did not seem to be in sync or consistent with what we experienced around us or even from our past. There was a disconnect. There was discord. And now comes submergence, where we must sink beneath the surface of things. Discord has thrown us off course. Our map is missing icons. We can't find our true north. Our life is in disarray. In submergence, we get that sinking feeling that we're beginning to lose control of some things, sinking deeper. In, from discord, submerging into all the things that we fear. Just as with discord, the message of submergence can be brought by either delight or disaster. Delight in an experience of nature can illuminate the discord in our personal relationships. If we're standing at the shore, watching a beautiful sunset may make us ponder why am I in a job that I hate? Or why am I in a relationship that doesn't go well, which brings me suffering? Something from delight can illuminate the discord in our lives as we submerge. When it comes by disaster, the experience helps us see what is most important to us. It strips away everything that is unessential. To many, the experience of disaster and submergence is terrifying and frightening. We tend to lose everything that had meaning and purpose. We wonder, will we survive this submergence? Will we be able to breathe? Will we be able to come back to the surface? Will we die? Will we survive at all? Because of this fierceness and submergence, the experience is best faced with the medicine that we call bravery. Remember, you are not alone. Others have gone before us who have experienced such fierceness, disaster, terrifying experiences. In fact, many of the world's great philosophies and religions have been born out of the confrontation of personal lives with disaster where people found the fierceness and bravery within themselves to find meaning and purpose and to rise above the experience of disaster. And this is where we learn bravery. And bravery is the second of the seven grandfather teachings that applies to us at this point in our life development. Celtic cosmology speaks of the bravery required of ones who will travel between worlds often fraught with danger and peril, but it requires bravery. In some African cosmology, in the circle of life, says that in the bottom quarter of that medicine wheel, if you will, the circle of life, is the power of the shape of the V turned this way, symbolizing that we need to stand on legs of strength to find bravery and to face the peril that comes with submergence. In this same circle, the shamans of Peru approach it from the south into the circle for their own rituals 
seeking the bravery required. Indigenous tribes in North America burn cedar in the direction of the South in ceremony and ritual, attempting to find that which will grow within, bringing bravery and the strength to find one's path in the face of peril. Our bravery will be used to help us discern right action, to do what is right for our relationships, our families, and our communities, and our world universe. It will have us move forward with faith in the face of what we are fearing. At this point, we find that we must understand and face the difference between unnecessary pain and necessary pain. What is unnecessary pain? At this point in submergence, wisdom calls us to face necessary pain with bravery, but also to let go of unnecessary pain. Facing necessary pain brings us the resolve and wisdom to let go of unnecessary pain, that which is not essential to our journey. What is Unnecessary pain, these things are unnecessary pain. An unwillingness to forgive, an unwillingness to ask for help, a demand to control everything, and also what is unnecessary pain is to live our lives half-heartedly. Bravery requires us to face necessary pain and implement the strategies and skills of forgiveness, of knowing we don't have to control and cannot control everything. It also requires us to ask for help. Remember, that's how we find our helpers and our healers and our heroes. It also calls us and fuels us with energy to live a life wholeheartedly. We also must have the wisdom to know that we cannot hold on to resentments. Many of us experience, in fact, that we placed our trust in resentments. We had been hurt. We had been betrayed. We had been wounded in the experiences of life. And so we made ourselves a promise not to be hurt again, perhaps even not to trust again, not to surrender to love or compassion and forgiveness. And so our armor became our resentments. And our resentments, we thought, was a formidable weapon to protect ourselves. And we were wrong. We, at times, even thought that resentments would even act like a shelter for us to keep us safe. Here in Submergence with Bravery, we find that resentments grant no shelter. In fact, I like to use the saying when I'm facing challenging problems, helter skelter, remember this, resentments do not shelter. So here comes the invitation to take courage, to have bravery, to let go of unnecessary pain, and to begin to face the necessary pain that we experience in life, in submergence. What is necessary pain? This is the horrendous pain and suffering that can be found in the world. From wars, poverty, tribal warfare, racism, ageism, and sexism that change lives forever, sometimes annihilate even an entire race or faith or its attempt at that. These necessary pains we have in the world and we must face them with bravery. As you have experiences of facing submergence and its fears and sometimes terrors, it can help us to be wise knowing the difference between necessary and unnecessary pain. So let's take a minute and look at how we can use this wisdom and knowledge for a safer path, even in the perils of submergence. Because many times submergence is not by choice. It is brought upon us by circumstances in the world, sometimes even brought upon us by loved ones. 
and we let down and let go and we begin to get that sinking sensation that we're losing connection with all that we hold dear, all that we thought would help guide us, sometimes now begins to be washed away. Submergence, not by choice, means we lose loved ones. There is a disease and poverty. A town is lost in a disaster. A group of peoples are massacred. It's unclear just how we can find our way in such horrific things. We find ourselves like many before us who had good hearts and lived wholeheartedly. That in such times, like they before us, we find ourselves weeping at such tragedy and loss. Sometimes from our weeping, we get swept away into great peril. We lose our grounding, we're unsure where we are. This sometimes looks like what psychologists call rumination. We begin to think of things over and over and over again. They seem to loop, link together, and just go on and on and on, and we don't seem to be able to stop them. It can be a terrifying experience, not being able to have control of our thoughts. Rumination. We find ourselves reviewing our wounds, the slights of words and comments, we can't stop thinking about them. We think about them over and over again and find ourselves unable to forgive them. And in unable to forgive them, we're unable to forget them and we are unable to release them. And so we think and we think and we think and we remember and we remember and we remember over and over again in rumination. And so, sometimes for comfort, we turn to collusion. We take our rumination and bring it into collusion with other people who will, we believe, comfort us by ruminating with us about wounds against our nation, our tribe, our community, our family. And so we can sit together with the comfort of what looks like community only to be in collusion, to not forgive, to not forget, to think about them over and over again. And as we do so over and over again, the body itself, along with the mind and the spirit, experience the trauma over and over again. Little do we know at that point, we are creating and recreating our own trauma and we can pass it on from generation to generation through families and communities and nations. Sometimes that's become so intense that we begin to make others the very core of our problems as we understand them. We begin to see them as larger than life. Sometimes we begin to see them as evil, less than, or as garbage or as nothing in such collusion with others as we ruminate over and over again about our wounds. So we find ourselves sinking deeper and deeper in submergence and bitterness and unforgiveness. We begin to lose our way again. And if we are going to survive, if we are going to come back out of this, we must find a way to lighten this load to begin to intervene and stop the rumination and the collusion. We must be brave to do this. And just how is it we can? Just as earlier though, when we thought resentments might help shelter us at a critical time, helter skelter, they do not shelter. We find now what we call character defects and they are alive and well, especially when we are afraid and anxious, especially in the aspects of rumination and collusion. If things have gone badly, we are now justifying and rationalizing our resentments and bitterness. We are demanding that things to be different. We are back again, attempting to control everything, and we're not asking for help, except for people to help us pick our own wounds and collusion with one another. 
Our character defects are not our friends here. The way out is to find a character design. If we are careful, if we ask for help, if we look to our heroes and helpers and healers, if we begin to trust the process, there can be a character design that teaches us a new way of living, that can actually heal character defects and move us into a new life. In fact, our tears in submergence can submerge us beyond our own terrifying fears into a new possibility for transformed life. And if we've been careful and utilized and called to us all that can aid us, including ancestors and spiritual life, we find there is an invitation from life itself at this point in submergence. What a surprise, just when we were facing our greatest fears and just when we thought we could never even find a breath again, comes the invitation. This great invitation from life to move from character defect into a grand character design that can help us achieve our dreams requires, again, bravery requires a willingness of our heart and spirit to ask for help, to reach out and call and connect with our heroes, helpers, and healers, to ask life itself, to ask Mother Earth, Father Sky, for its healing powers, to help us design a new way of living that will help us submerge from our fears. Sometimes the invitation will come at a time of transformation in our lives. Just when we felt the greatest fear, for example, watching a shoreline erode away in a horrific storm, we find that all of that silt goes downriver and makes a delta, fertile for new life. If we have the eyes to see, if we shift from character defect to character design, that dream does appear in the invitation from life. If we come to that experience where we must release cherished beliefs that have given us great comfort in the past and even guidance, if we're to grow, sometimes they have to go. This requires bravery again. They've been companions guidance and comfort along the way. This is not out of disrespect that we let them go, but it is out of great respect that we do release them. At this place, it's good to remember again that we are all related, that many have gone before us, not only our own ancestors, but many ancients before us, have faced times of utter despair when it was required to release the things they cherished most in order to find something even greater and grander. New understandings of life itself, new understanding the God of their understanding and the possibilities, even the healing of memories and the opening of imagination by letting go. This requires bravery. And so we have moved from discord into submergence and submergence facing our greatest fears and terrors and necessary pain while releasing unnecessary pain. We find the following things are now true. We have submerged and survived. We have found bravery to be an inner space and an inner place from which to live that will last us a lifetime and beyond. We have found a breath within us, which we thought we would never find. That first breath that we were promised when we come up out of submergence and take that gasping breath that says, we're so alive now, we have survived. Submergence. We are finding our release from rumination we find no need for collusion and repeated suffering over and over again in our minds created by us. 
we have survived discord and submergence, and now we are prepared for the incredible experience of emergence. Sometimes my clients will come and say, Dr. Emmerich, I have to ask you this because I can't stop thinking about it. Rumination. How do I get out of it when I can't stop thinking about it? It creates such distress. I cannot sleep. Sometimes I cannot eat. Sometimes I overeat. I want to get into addiction. I want anything but the suffering that comes with rumination. What we will find as we move into emergence is that we will move from rumination to release of chronic compulsive thinking based on not collusion with others about pain and suffering, but about collaboration with others together with a commonly held dream that takes us beyond ourselves into a new life. So stay tuned. If you find yourself thinking over and over again, how can I stop ruminating?